guys, welcome to Bright in the Bluegrass, a colorful collection of Kentucky. Um, so today, we can't do this without celebrating the horse of Kentucky. So um, our thoroughbred has to be celebrated, and so we're gonna be doing a pastel project. Um, let me show you. Um, we're gonna be doing an oil pastel of a beautiful horse in a field of orange cone flowers and a blue sky, of course, in the background. Um, so we're gonna take you step by step, and um, just as we do any composition, we can't get to the oils until we get the composition drawn out and that put on our paper. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go over our supplies so that you can have everything ready um, that you need as we work through the project, okay? So, I'm gonna put this back over here. Um, some of the things that you're gonna need are uh, uh, oil pastel paper. Now, this is, um, let me just show you the back of this. This is actually Strathmore. This was came in a big packet. It's the pastel paper and it's for any kind of dry medium. So oil pastels or uh, just the, the soft pastels, really good for it. Now, what do we mean by dry and, and wet materials? Wet would be like watercolor or it would be like acrylic uh, and gouache and those kind of things. But so this is dry, so it doesn't actually have any liquid or fluid to it. So <clears throat> anyways, I'm putting this paper down. Um, now on yours, you might get, mine is kind of a gray color. And um, um, in the, the, pads, pads, the pad has different shades. So you might get a brown or a blue or a blue gray. So that's really not gonna affect anything at the end product. So don't be stressed out if your paper is a little bit different than mine. So um, so we're not gonna be using that right now, so just put that to the side. What you need to have right now is paper of the horse. And I tried to go ahead and tape this for you. Um, so on this one, I'm gonna cut off the bottom part. So now the other, t other papers you'll have to tape. The horse is taped for you, so. But anyways, um, you can kind of put them side by side. Okay, so um, what you're gonna need these papers side by side, you're gonna need your oil pastels and uh, a washcloth. Would well, probably be better than a paper towel, but a paper towel would work too. And it wouldn't hurt to have a little jar of water. So your fingers get a little oily, you can just dip them in there and um, work, at, work it out on your uh, rag so okay so before we get started we uh want to get our composition drawn and again drawing is about what you see in shapes um basic shapes so horses are one of those things that are just like wow they're hard to draw but you can draw it Just draw that out. So if you wanna just take it and break it down into basic shapes. So I just want you to kind of look at the horse picture that's here and see if you can see some basic shapes. Okay? If you're looking, you might be able to see a basic shape here. What shape is that? And here. And even if I continued this line and I went straight across, straight across here, see that shape right there? How many times have you seen that shape already? First triangle, another triangle, and another triangle. So you see three triangles so far. Let's go down here. Looking right here what do you see there what shape do you see there you see an oval it's a flattened out circle so we have a triangle it didn't actually get to the vertex but the crossing but we've got an oval we've got two triangles Okay, and then 
If you look again, and you keep going, oop, kind of went off the paper, see another triangle. I'm going to erase that. I don't want that line, so it mess me up. So really, if you look at the horse, you're just seeing a bunch of shapes that have just been uh, put together. Looking at this, uh, all the shapes, and we're going to transfer it to our paper and using our basic shapes and drawing. So we're going to start with at the top. We're going to, we're good on the camera, right, Mr. Moore said. So we're going to go ahead, come down about an inch. I'm just going to draw a little line. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to use my hand, but you can use your hand. Mine is about from my finger to my thumb. And I'm just going to transfer it over, and I'm just going to transfer it over. A little clip at the top, a little clip at the bottom. And then if you'll notice, this line is right, not quite straight. If it was straight, it would look more like a straight line across. But you can go ahead and do a straight line so you can get your angle based off of that straight line. And then, and then it's going to go down about another inch. So now I'm going to draw from that point to the upper with that line on the on the right side. So I've got an angle. And then there's gonna be a little space to see. And then I'm gonna draw from the top down to the bottom. It's not perfect, doesn't have to be. So that's kind of got my neck portion in and we're gonna leave. We're gonna leave all these lines and we'll come back and do some more things with it later. Now, after I've got that done, I see that there is a nice oval right here. So again, I'm going to use, and if you want to, you're more than welcome to use a, uh, a ruler, but I'm going to use my hand, and I can see that it's just right here at the curve in my hand. So I'm going to put that same technique to use, and I'm going to put it right here, and then I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to see what was exactly I was measuring. That was the tip of where the ear was, right? Okay, so now I'm going to look down to my ear. It's not going to be right here, but I can go ahead and draw in a little bit of an ear here and kind of sketch in a little bit of an ear here. But that is the basis of where that um, large oval is going to go. And I do this multiple times until I feel comfortable with the shape that I've drawn. Okay. So that's kind of decent. All right, so now, um, moving on, I'm gonna come off of this, and I'm coming off of the top part of the oval here, and I'm kind of bringing it down to a point here. So this is gonna be a point here, and this is gonna be a point here. Well, it doesn't look much like a horse. <laughs> and that's okay, because again, we're just breaking it down into basic shapes. So the first thing that we did was get our lines here, and that was the neck, okay? And then we did our oval and our ears, and then we did kind of the nose of the horse. Now all this stuff is not perfect, it's not proportioned out exactly the way we want it, but we've gotta start with getting basic shapes in first, okay? So now we're gonna start actually connecting and making these shapes make sense. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do and I might uh, use my ruler and make it just a little bit um, darker. Not my ruler, not my pencil. I don't know why I said that. I must have been thinking about a ruler. I'm gonna make this a little bit darker. I'm gonna come in here, here, my horse's ear. Uh, Notice in my reference, I had a little bit of a space there. We want that space because we want that mane to be there. Okay. Now, you don't have to draw in this circle again. That was just kind of a starting point. So we're going to draw in here. Draw that straight line here. And then see how this is a little, little bit of a curve? Just kind of make a little smile here. And then we're going to make a line here, make a little smiley, 
And then from that, we're going to come down and we're going to bring in that line here. Kind of using those basic shapes. Now, when you get down here towards the bottom, you can see that this is where you're going to have a little hump go up. Kind of come back in. And we're going to draw in our mouth. And any time that you think I'm going too fast, please just pause and, and take just a minute of time. Do you see the horse now? <laughs> it is actually, once you get to this step, it is amazing how quick your picture comes together. And you can see um, the horse now. Whereas before you couldn't see but just these shapes and it didn't make sense and it wasn't pretty. But now I've got a really nice composition of a horse head going on here. So um, let's look back down at our paper. You can see on the drawing here that there, that line that we did here, that was like the tip of the eye. So, so if you really want to measure, you can use a ruler or you can use your fingers. I know from that point of the smile here, the little smiley shape there, to that point is going to be the distance between where my eyes are. So I just use my fingers and very carefully move it over as, um, using my fingers as a guide. That's where I'm gonna start my eye. Now remember, the eye is not above the line, so keep that in mind and keep that eye below that diagonal line. And they have a pretty almond shape eye, so you can just kinda put it to where you like it, okay? And then we're gonna add in our nostril kind of an oval shape and um, maybe a little bit of a muscle right through there okay so now if you are ready to you can go ahead and maybe throw in some of his mane just some random lines and go back over your lines make sure they're where they uh, where you want them to be making it nice and dark so that you'll know which lines you want to use to trace in a minute and you don't really have to do all of the main because it'll come naturally as as we uh, develop through our painting so and here's the eye okay so what we're going to do we're going to do a uh, Sorry, I shook the camera. Oops, we're gonna do a graphite transfer. Um, well, you can use you can use carbon paper if you want to, but um, that's that's fine. That's great. But for us and our purposes, the easiest way is um, is just to use the part of the pencil, um, flip it over, and we'll make our own carbon paper. If you put your drawing over. And I just, hold on, I want to say, if you like, to, if you would like to do, if you're just drawing the picture and you're just not happy at all with your horse drawing and you tried and you tried and tried and you're stressed out and you're really not satisfied, you are welcome to the exact same con uh, concept that I'm getting ready to teach for this part to the original drawing. But once I, want, I do want to challenge you to draw it out because that's what's gonna help improve your skills. So try to draw it out. So now I'm gonna take my graphite pencil and go over it and press hard with my leg going over all the parts, the lines that you've already drawn. And, Hopefully you can see it. Um, I can see mine, but hopefully you can see yours too. If not, you can just uh, hold it up to the light. And don't, yeah, don't do the original circles. You only want to do the lines that you want to show up. So don't do your basic shape lines. So why would I do this drawing and go to the trouble of doing this? But if I had taken this and drawn all of this on my paper, I would have had all of those uh, lines on my art paper. So by doing this, it keeps our um, pastel paper nice and clean. And so the ugly part stays on the ditto paper and then we're just left with the pretty paper for 
our pastel paper. So you might want to lift it up again and look at the light and make sure you've got everything covered and make sure your eyes colored in. And we're going to get out our pastel paper. Now, pastel paper, like watercolor paper, has two different sides to it. One side is tail is a little bit smoother than the other side. You actually need to look to the side that has a little bit more texture. They're very, very similar, so you might want to just be a little bit more careful about picking it out. We're going to go ahead and tape the horse down at an angle to account for the um, neck that we weren't able to get on the paper. But your drawing will have that. We adjusted it when we cut it off. Uh, we um, made the copies of it for you. So yours will be more um, exact than when I did this video. So um, he doesn't have a neck, so we're pulling it out. But now if you use the um, paper that I copied for you, yours should be correct. So you can kind of see where the neck is going to go. My um, ditto one um, that I did originally did not have that, but we did correct it when we gave you the paper. So um, yours should be okay, but just make sure you have a space for the neck of the horse. Uh, mine had to be on an angle. Yours may not have to be on an angle. Just kind of look at it and see what looks correct, okay? So mine has to be tilted to account for the neck, okay? So just make sure yours looks like it's in the position that you want it to be. So you can just put your tape down. Um, you can use masking tape, masking tape or um, painter's tape or even scotch tape, but be very careful when you pull it up. So it makes a little hinge and we're going to, um, trace it and I, I think I am going to pull mine down a little bit more here so um, you may have to adjust it as well so just I think it, I want it more at the bottom so I'm adjusting it again so just kind of work with your own and just make it the way you want it to look we're so sorry about the repositioning but you'll find that sometimes you do have to do those kind of things so I'm looking for my space okay and I'm thinking that's pretty good make sure that he has a neck for what we didn't get on the paper originally yours should have a neck okay okay so I'm pretty happy with that because he's bending down and he's smelling of the flowers so um, I think that's actually a good position for him so with that said we're gonna um, compensate for what's not there if uh, you drew it the way I did it on the video or um, if not then you can just go ahead and draw out it draw it out and I'm drawing it and transferring I'm, I'm pressing pretty hard so that that uh, graphite on the underside will kind of come through Okay, and what's so awesome about hinging it is that if you make a mistake and you don't get something um, on there, then you can, you've already got it in position, so you can just come back to it and, and you don't have to re about, worry about repositioning because the paper's already in position. So, yahoo! All right, so I've got everything that I need. So very, very, very carefully take off the tape and um, you can just put that to the side. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with the oil pastels themselves. And the way we're gonna work with that is we usually start with the lightest color first. So with thoroughbreds they kind of usually have a marking um, some white marking um, on the front part of their head so we'll start with the the peach color um, and we're just going to kind of draw in oops, hair oops 
So we're just gonna draw in um, a little bit of where that white might be. And then we're gonna put that in on the ears. And I'm putting a fair amount of pressure on as well because I want the color to be nice and heavy and smooth. And if you just put light pressure, it's just not going to even hardly show up. You put more pressure and you get um, more vibrant color, more opaque color. Okay, so I'm just going to put an area there kind of underneath his eye and down the, the head. So you kind of want to make it curve when it gets to the eye and make a little bit um, of a little smiley face under the eye. We're making some contours. If we just colored it brown, it wouldn't have much depth to it. So sometimes we have to put in the depth to show his... Uh, or her face shape. So then we're going to come back in and we're going to put in some white. I'm putting some white around the eyes, around the ears, and down the front of his head. And I'm doing it in the direction that the, the fur would naturally fall in. Press 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 pretty hard leaving some spots and we're gonna put some more of that peach in so you can leave some spots showing through and but if you don't do the white first you kind of lose that that color so you can kind of come in and put some of that peach in now maybe some of those areas that you didn't quite get and then you can come back in with the white again so it gives it a little bit more dimension not just a stark white might be a good time to very quickly may you may even want to take a towel or a brush and wipe off that excess that's because the oil pastel can sometimes get on your paper later so okay so let's go on to uh, the main. Now, this step is completely up to optional and up to you. If you want to do this, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. If you want to be realistic, you might want to skip this step. And you've got to do this first because if you don't, then the black and the brown just completely cover it up and you won't be able to see it at all. So I'm just going to kind of start. I'm just going to make kind of like a little curve line. So I'm putting in some color because I want it to show up at the end. Okay. And then just a few more, a few more times. I know it looks kind of silly now, but it will all blend in at the end. All right. And now that I've made those lines, I'm going to come in and make them a little bit darker and more pronounced. All right. And now some purple. And of course, you could add um, pinks or blues or whatever color you want. We're going to go back in with some browns and blacks as well, but this is just that color that's going to be popping through. All right. So... We're going to uh, work some more on it later, so we'll uh, work on that uh, in a little bit. So now, we're just going to go ahead and grab our brown. And as we're using the oil pastels, oops, sorry, I shook the camera, apologize. <laughs> you want to um, you want to uh, move it into the way the hair moves. So 
we're going to do that kind of motion. And then as it gets here, it's going to be going like in a curved of motion. Okay. So we're going to do all of the hair in those directions. So you might want to, I'm going to go ahead and do the ears that way. And then the horse's hair would go kind of more of a vertical. Let me just stop for a second and talk to you. Oil pastels, you think that they are fast, but they are not. We have to build layers upon layers to make them look rich and vibrant. Okay, so I'm going to turn my, my paper to the side so that I can actually start coloring in. And what we want to do is just start pressing in the same direction that the fur would be naturally growing. And I keep calling it fur. It's hair. <laughs> horse hair. My husband's correcting me. It's hair. Horse hair, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Again, a very uh, fair amount of pressure that you want to put in here. Okay, and then you can start kind of turning. A little bit of pressure again. Make sure that you're getting that nice and covered. And then kind of cover, uh, curve around the eye. A little bit of pressure around the eye to get those contours in. Slowly but sure, we're going to be building up layers. This is probably going to be um, frustrating for some of you all that want to get the uh, projects done quick because oil pastels just take time. It's not a crayon. Crayons, you know, you just color in and it's life is great. But with oil pastels, to really get those vibrant colors, you're going to have to do lots of layering, lots of pressure. Okay, so now coming up to the main, and I'm just going to start coloring in some of those spots that have not been colored. Going in the direction of, that the main would fall. Outlining the ears. Okay. Once you get that first layer in and you feel pretty confident about the composition, you can um, Go ahead and do the second layer and start doing darker and start filling in the spaces. But before we do that, uh, let's go ahead and put in some orange here and there so um, we can show a little bit of the muscle contour. So maybe some orange above that little line that we drew to show where that muscle was there. And then um, kind of underneath that mane above the eye. So we're going to put orange under the eye, and we're going to pull it down, working in our second layer. Okay, a little bit around the ear. So a little bit of orange through there. And you could even bring some up into the main area. Changing directions, of course, and then a little upside down smile around the eye. And then his jaw muscle there, and then right around the edges. All right. If you need to, you can pause and um, give yourself just a few minutes and 
we'll come back and we'll start doing another layer. But if you're ready, we're going to go ahead and start the next layer. So again, I'm going to start with my brown and this time I'm going to put a little bit more pressure. This is our third layer. So um, we're try to cover up all of those little white spaces and those little divots in your horse at this point. All this is going to start blending in, looking really nice. This is where it takes a little bit of time, so give yourself some time um, because even though it does take the time, you'll be happier with your results at the end if you'll just take a little bit extra time. Go back around the eye, going in the direction of the eye, that upside down smiley face, don't like to say frown, and then around the lower part of the eye. And if you get down to your paper area, just like a crayon, you can peel some of that paper off. I'd like to keep the paper on there if I can because it does give some structure and, and keeps your fingers a little bit cleaner as well. So if you can, keep the paper on there. It's not going to hurt it if it doesn't have the paper, but it just kind of keeps it, your pastel from breaking. Not pretty see the depth that the orange is now creating and it's not even done and we're already getting some of that dimension so now we're kind of going to go into that peach area some kind of layering it on top of that and that's going to give us some more dimension And like right here, I just slow down on the edge area though. So it's because it's just so easy to get that on the other part of your paper. It's not going to run it if you do, but it will. You want to keep our grass area clean. So try not to do that. Just slow down around the edges. It's looking great. Okay, so I'm kind of going back over a few of the areas where I see some um, of the paper showing through, and then I'm going to come up around the main and I'm going to start coloring in again some more of those areas. Very careful around the ears. Sometimes you're going to have some shavings. Just try not to wipe them off. Try to just shake it off because the shavings, if you wipe them off, then they'll um, actually get on your paper. So just shake off your paper. I 
All right. Feeling pretty happy about it. Coming in on that right side and give it some uh, brown on the right side. So when you've got that brown um, pretty thick, you might want to just come in and stop and take a break at this point. And when we come back, All right, so now what we want to do is we want to add a little bit of definition to our horse and we're going to use black to do that. So go ahead and grab your black and make sure your hands are clean. Always keep your fingers rubbed and clean. So let's go on down here and let's kind of look. Um, we'll start with working with our mane and trying to get some of that in. So I'm going to just start layering in some of the dark black. I know I don't think you can see if I'm doing my hand like that. I might even turn it to the side so you can see better. And we're just going to kind of randomly draw in some of these little main pieces here. I like these. We want to make sure these ones up front are kind of coming down around his eyes a little bit. You might have a few pieces that are a little bit longer. Okay. So once you get a few going, you can go back and you can start making areas a lot darker and pressing in because your mane is really going to be more dark. You're just going to have a few of those colors showing through. Now, if you want the purple and the red to show through, you don't want to go over those completely. So you can leave some of those areas uh, showing. You can watch what I'm doing, or you can go ahead and start on yours, or you can pause and get caught up. Or you can work while I'm working. It's just whatever you need to do. some um, art classes before and they had music playing in the background which was fine but the problem with that can be that you might want to play your own music in the background or you might want to have um, you know maybe there's people around you that want to have conversation or maybe you're doing this together as a family um, so sometimes less is more so if you find the silence deafening then maybe put on some of your own background music so that you can listen to something while you're working. I'm leaving that option to you though. If you can tell but just right going over the places that are not really colored in by either the brown the purple or the red I'm making those darker I don't really want my paper to show through now some people really like that look um, but I like mine to look a little bit more smooth kind of like an oil painting would look So that's looking pretty good. Um, so we're not finished though, but I think I'm gonna pick up my brown again. Um, and we're gonna go back over that a little bit and I'm gonna start kind of blending those together. Again, making it to where I don't see the paper, but the oil pastels.
You can go back and forth, but just make sure you're going in the same direction as the horse uh, mane is going. I'm blending some more in here. Okay, so I might even come back up here and make this a little bit darker through here. All right, so my mane is kind of kind of close to being finished. I might even go back in here with some red now. Oops, I think I heard a break. Put some more red in, just where that is a little bit white showing through. I'm trying to get that paper completely covered. switch back to the black and this time I'm going to uh, try to find a area that might look like it's got a little bit more of a point on it because I want to go around the ear of my horse and around the eyes and start putting some definition in so let's go up here to the ear and it would be better to draw inside the brown so it's not like you're outlining you're actually going to draw on the inside part of the ear so that you're not drawing outside the brown. So you're kind of going over the brown rather than outside of the brown, okay? So just kind of draw that in and let's put a little tip on his ear here. Like he's been just dipped in some ink. Maybe a smaller line here. Can I put a little tip here? Okay. And same thing here. I'm going to extend that one a little bit. I might even go back and extend this ear a little bit. I'm looking at it might be a little bit small. And that's a good thing. You can come back and if you want your ears to be a little bit bigger, you can extend them with this black. All right. Okay, do you see how just adding that black in is already starting to give your um, horse way more definition? Now, they have uh, little muscles in their neck, and this is where we put the highlight. So underneath where we put that orange highlight, we're gonna put a little bit of a black. See how that's gonna work out there? And then um, right here where his jaw is, I'm gonna just barely outline that. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do some smudging with our fingers. Just kinda draw on the black here. And you can draw a little outline here as well. Okay. We'll draw some black around where the mouth would be. You want to draw your mouthpiece into. Remember doing that in our original picture? I want to draw a little bit around here. Around the nose, it gets a little bit darker. So it's okay, just to kind of put that in. And then we have our nostril. It's gonna make our nice round circle. I'm just gonna keep filling that in. It's really not even a circle, is it guys? It's more of an oval, oval shape. And then we'll get a little bit more defined on the mouth. All right, so take just a minute and make sure that you're getting everything outlined the way you want. And I might even go back over it one more time before I start smudging. So I think I want more of a definition here. It's a pretty thin line. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the eye and we're gonna draw it like he is almost like a little almond shape. So if your brown was not perfect, it's okay. It can get perfect now because you're gonna do the eye. 
keep working around. See what I've done there? Okay, and you move your paper around as you need to. Where it's brown, you're gonna see it starting to make like a shadow area, and that is exactly what you want. It's really, really pretty. And then just above that, is where his little crease is, or her crease. Okay, and then we're gonna put a little line underneath. We can start filling in the back area. They don't have a lot of white. You can barely see a little bit of white. So the corners around where the iris would be are gonna be filled in with black, okay? All right, and then you'll pick your brown back up and let's just make a nice iris. Doesn't look perfect right now, but we're getting there. So make your black outline and then start filling that in with brown. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to my black and then I'm going to fill in around that area. Okay, so everything's going to be nice and black right around the eye. Around that part out a little bit. Darken it up. Okay. Alright, so let's go in and let's put a pupil. Now, let's not put the pupil right in the very center because he's not really looking right at us up. He's looking down. I keep calling him a him, but it can be whatever you want it to be. A him or a her. Or... So put that in. May need some more brown. Okay, so there's not a lot of life in the eye right now, but there's going to be as we add some more of our color. So put a little bit of black in there. But what's really going to make this horse come alive is when we put in the white. So let's come up here and right above it, let's take a nice press with the white. Press down twice. And then kind of come up here and put a little glisten. And that's going to help to define the eye. I'm still not happy with the darkness over on the eye, so I might work on it some more, get a little bit darker. All right, so once you have that done, we're gonna come in and we're going to take where we've drawn these dark lines and we're gonna use our finger just to kind of blend them in following the line that you drew and just blend them in so that they're not so uh, defined. Okay, the same thing goes for the nose. We're going to put a little bit of brown in the nose. And at the bottom here and maybe at the top a little bit. And then just put a little highlight here. We're going to kind of come back. Ooh, I hate it when that happens. We're going to blend that in. Some more of the white here. got a good little horse going. Still not quite happy with this eye. My uh, pastel wasn't as sharp as it should have been, so make sure you're 
movies in Europe. Tip of your, your black. So um, if you want, you can take a second and take this over to the garbage and uh, get it, the little pieces of pastel off. Uh, mine didn't come off great, so I'm just going to kind of brush them off to the side. All right, so we're really ready to begin in the next part. Um, see how dirty my hands are? Take just a minute and wipe off your hands to get ready for the next step. Okay, so the next step is to actually put in some of the white for the sky, and then we'll kind of work our way into um, getting that completed. So um, on my white, you want to make sure that it's nice and clean. I've wiped it off with my rag, and I'm actually going to turn it around. Now, um, let me show you. In this picture, the break between the grass and the sky is a flower. So we can go ahead and do our white up to this portion of the nose and we'll be fine. Okay, so now this is a method called scumbling and it's just where you take it and you're basically coming around and you're doing little squiggly marks. Now the key here is to not cover it. You just want to kind of keep, like even on that they're like little figure eights or you could do back and forth, and round and round. Just don't co co uh, color the whole thing in. We don't have a light blue with our collection, so we're gonna kinda make a lighter blue by starting with our white. And again, you're putting a decent amount of pressure. Now, when you get close to the main, be very careful to stay away from that black. You don't want to pull that up. It's going to immediately uh, start swirling into your white. You don't want that one. So figure eight, circles, back and forth. Just applying some pressure. Again, it doesn't really matter what direction you're going to go because we're going to use our um, fingers to blend all this. Stay away from the horse portion. And turn your paper whichever way will work for you. Oh, see, I got a little bit of black right there. See how easy that is to do? And, you know, this is a little bit more physical work than doing acrylics and even watercolor because of all the the pressure that you had to put down. So it actually is tiring. So, you know, if, if you have to take several breaks in this, it's okay. That is the nice option of having it in this format is you can just work at your own pace. I would say um, if you are not caught up that this actually might be a good place to take a break um, and then we'll come back and we'll start working on the flowers below. Okay? Okay, so now we're going to randomly put our flowers down here. Now, um, you've been taught how to do different flowers throughout your life. Um, I chose to do some Kentucky flowers. Um, some of the plants that are indigenous to Kentucky are the coneflowers and um, so there are purple coneflowers but there are also orange coneflowers and so although you might not see a horse in a field of um, coneflowers you never know he could be there but we're just making ours whimsical and fun and so we're going to start by doing just kind of a cross like this and you're going to find these flowers are going to grow as we put more in so we want to put another one here maybe a bigger one here. And then we're gonna kinda of come down and put another one here. And we're gonna put one maybe here. And this one's gonna be smaller. See how it's made a triangle? Um, triangles look good in art a lot of times. You'll see that they really work. And so because we have a triangle here, 
let's go ahead and put one down here, okay? And then I may even have a little one like I did in my promo, not my promo, my demo piece right here. So we've got triangle here, we've got a triangle here, and look, we even have a triangle here. So they'll all look pretty nice and uniform. So we did that with the orange, which this portion is not going to show up, but you want to take just a minute and get this comp part of the composition laid out because we're going to come right in with some yellow and start going over these parts. Now, I literally counted the petals on the orange um, comb flower, and there are about 24, so it's two dozen, so that's a lot of little petals. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to just very easily punch in some yellow, and then we'll go back over it with a little bit of red and a little bit of orange to define them a little bit. So um, just remember, it they can be uh, pretty skinny because you really are going to have to do a lot of them. So just start here in the center. You might even want to make you a center draw you a little center there. Now this isn't going to show up but it kind of helps to define where the center is going to be. And then just take it and start scrubbing out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, got about 20 or so in and that's okay. What I want you to do is I want you to do the yellow on every single flower. So um, I'm going to continue working and you can just work on that part and then we're going to go into the second step of the flowers. paper around and make it work for you. If it's easier to turn it, then turn it. Don't forget to draw that circle in when you're doing it. Don't stress out if you're not getting 24. It is okay. If you only have 12, that's just fine. If you have more than 24, that's okay too. Um, another thing to consider, maybe too late now, but um, maybe if you redid this piece because you're going to have your oil pastels, you know, maybe your favorite flower is a rose or um, some other color. Maybe you like the little mellow, the little pink mellow flower. That's fine. Do it with those colors. Maybe your room has purple in it. Maybe you want to do some more with purple. Okay, what we're doing is we're building on all the warm colors. So we're going to be using yellow and orange and red. You can use three to four colors. If I just stopped here, it looks pretty immature, pretty um, simple. But as we build layers and layers, it makes it look more sophisticated and intentional. All right, so that's our first layer. So now we're going to go back with the orange. And if you need to, you can pause here. I know I've gone pretty fast through these. Just drawing in a center again. Okay. 
So if you need to, go ahead and pause and um, we'll, we can come back to this when you're ready for the next step. But if you are ready for the next step, um, we're going to go on and go through it. So now, what I want to do is I want to find a point, if you can, on your orange. And um, yours are hopefully still in a really nice shape. We're just going to start going over those and literally making an outline of orange. And again, a fair amount of pressure here. So what if you want to do a purple flower? Would you want to put yellow and purple little pastels together? Probably not. Do you know why you probably wouldn't want to put purple and yellow together? They are actually opposite on the color wheel. We have yellow here and purple here. Now, while they look great together because they're complementary colors, if you try to blend them, they're going to desaturate the color even to a point where it turns kind of more of a brown. Uh, just like red and green look great together, but not as blended colors. Okay? So if you really wanted to do something with a purple, you might have some purple in it. You could go with some pinks and some reds and some blues because they're beside each other on the color wheel but you wouldn't want to do anything opposite. You wouldn't want to mix your purple with your green. So you, they look good together, but just don't actually mix them. And the same trolls is true when you're painting with um, watercolors or acrylics or oils or gouache or any of those colors. Don't mix opposites on the color wheel. flower. Actually just snuck an extra petal in there too. That's okay.
So I'm done with this step, and if you would like, you can pause it right now before we go on to our next step, because um, we're going to introduce some of our red in there and some more of our orange, okay? Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so um, hopefully you're back from your pause. Um, I'm going to actually kind of come up here, and I'm going to fill in the tips of these a little bit more. just wanted you to get caught up on that one step. Kind of outline them first and then start filling in the tips. And again, you can leave some of that yellow showing. It's actually going to give it a lot of depth if you do. But I didn't want to move over to this step until you were finished your outline. One, you can pause again um, until you get the tips of all your petals um, colored in. So pause, or if you're ready to move on, go ahead and do our red. My red needs to be peeled again. So it's great kind of that it broke, gives me a nice edge to work with. So now I'm going to go around and I'm going to go to the center and I'm going to just kind of color in through that center where there may have been some shadows. I'm making some definition in the different petals. Some might have the red, if you look here, like some might have the red go further down into the petal. And some may not, may not go as far. But it certainly starts giving you definition in your petals, okay? Now, if you would like, and I did on mine. Mine, mine turned out pretty nice. They did have more of a red than orange. You can kind of even further define those petals individually by going over the orange itself. You don't have to do all of them, maybe just a few of them to kind of define them out. See that what we're doing here? Kind of lay down a little bit of color just to kind of start giving some definition to the individual petals. And if you like yours more with a red tint to them, you can certainly make it more red. Okay, I'm going to put like in some stripes, some really loose stripes here. Ever looked really close at a petal? It's got little tiny veins in it. Okay. So what I've just done, I'm going to do to all of the flowers. I'm going to come down at the bottom again. I'm going to do each petal is going to get dark here, maybe a little longer area, and then I'm going to come around and I'm going to trace them. So do that to every single one of your petals. So I'm just going to continue to work and I'm not going to talk until I'm finished with this step. So you can do the same. You can just start working and uh, I will be quiet. So you can listen to your music or talk with your friend or family. And we'll just get back in a minute.
Now, I don't know about you, but at this point, my hand is starting to cramp a little bit and I've got some different oil marks on it. So I'm gonna actually take a break and actually get in a different position. Um, and you may need to do that too, and that's great. So we're gonna come back in just a minute and we'll get started on our next step, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> got some black in my brown, so I'm just going to kind of clean it off. Like so, just kind of rub it on your uh, rag. Okay, so we're going to even put a little bit more definition by coming through and just by barely th going through the bottom portion of those petals. So we're just giving it a little definition on each side of the petal. You don't have to do the entire length of it, just maybe about one-fourth. Some of them you could take it up, um, the whole petal, so everything doesn't look completely uniform, just to give it a little bit of variation. Layer by layer, we're just going to do each one of our flowers like this. It's a little bit of brown. So if you wanted to have done a purple cone flower, you would have just started with the purple and then maybe built in some blues. So now we're going to actually make the center um, uh, brown and um, we're going to continue on and we'll do that with all the flowers. A little bit of brown to define those petals some more and color in the center where the cone part would be. Pastels are absolutely beautiful, but they can be tiring. Just going kind of up and down. Just kind of going around it. Sometimes you can use the edge of your pastel too. Kind of makes it a little bit easier. You can't always just put it straight down. Okay, moving on to another flower. Center, and then we're going to work around defining our petals again. I was just thinking too that um, well, you could get creative, and even um, if you wanted to put a harness on your horse, you could do that, and or you could maybe make a flower crown for your horse. I was just thinking too about, um, I, ha I hate that we're not having an in-person class, but I ha was also thinking that having it online in, is if, you know, we're doing it inside, maybe when it's hot outside or maybe if it's raining so that on the days that it really is nice, you guys can be outside and do what you want. Plus, you can really take your time and do as much as you want when you want and come back to it anytime you need to. I tell you, I, if it's nice outside, that's where I definitely want to be. It's a little hot today though. Okay, so we're putting a little bit more definition in our flowers. So it's really looking nice. Um, I know it takes time, but just stick with the process and um, you're going to be really proud of your final pro uh, product and you'll be glad that you took the time. It's going to be something that you're going to be able to really be proud of. Don't forget that little piece in that corner there if you did that corner flower. Okay, so 
At this point, you should have had your brown in and your centers in. So if you wanted to, you could stop and pause here until we get to the for the next step. But if you are ready, um, I'm going to give you a choice. So the first flowers I did, you can see that they have more of a red uh, or burnt orange instead of the really orange orange. And that just occurred by adding more red. So you could do one of two things. You could add more orange or you could add more red. Um, I think since I did more orange, or I'm sorry, more red on the other one, I think I'm gonna do more uh, orange on this one. So this purpose of this last color layer is, is so that we can get all of that little paper area covered up. So we're just gonna go in and finalize each petal or at least try to finalize it. And you may not be able to see the difference between those two petals, but once you put that layer on, you're gonna see the difference between those two petals. That one looks finished, and that one does not look as finished. It looks maybe kind of like a crayon. So just kind of go through and um, put that pressure in. And you want to, and this also, putting this last layer in kind of blends all those previous layers. See those three right there compared to the rest of them? It's just amazing how that last layer just pulls it all together, all those other layers. It just pulls it together. And this, you know, um, is what makes your product look finished. So many people will do old pastels and they just put on that first layer and then they're just they're done and they stop but you stop too quick because if you keep going you're going to get what uh you really want it to look like so i think i might come back in some red too some in the, some of those areas so just keep going don't don't stop when you think it's good give it a little bit more yeah, you can really see the difference between that flower and the other flowers now, even at the distance. Building it up layer by layer. All right, look at the difference, guys, between the first flower and that other flower. That's why we take the time to build up the layers and run those layers together and blend them together. So pretty. This is where you go um, to a little step up in your in your projects. Certainly not professional for uh, myself, but I do know that building layers makes your layers and your paintings and your pictures just look more finished. Most artists stop too soon, whether that be with acrylics or um, watercolor. Sometimes we just stop too soon. You can just keep building up layers. Do it to every petal, guys. Get them all blended in. Almost our last layer. Um, got a little bit more to go. I'm really proud of you guys because I know this is a um, physically challenging. I know my hands get tired and get crampy. Is it crampy? or crampy, crampy. They cramp, my hands cramp. <laughs> okay. So I'm using orange, you could have used red. Or you could have went back with some purple if you did purple. Could have also used um, a lighter color of pink and then a red as an accent that would have been really pretty too that's the joy of it you can just be as creative as you want this is just um, a sampling of course it will give you tips and techniques and then you do um, you take those tips and techniques and you come up with your own projects you learn some processes and then you create new works of art. I don't know if you can hear the air conditioner running, but it is 
really running. It's gotten really hot, so our air conditioner is really running, running, running. Of course, I'm downstairs in the basement, so you can really hear it. So we have shut the blinds and um, pulled the curtains and all those things, trying to conserve energy, but it's just running, running, running. All right. Okay. So now um, you can pause or if you are ready, we'll go ahead and pick up our um, a little bit of yellow and we're going to add a little bit of highlight. Just kind of draw some lines in it. Kind of barely able to see that, but um, I know you can't see because of my hand right now. We're just adding a little bit of highlight, kind of almost like that little line that goes through the, the flower petal. And so every time we add a layer, we add a little bit more dimension. So this one's not going to take nearly as long as the last layer. Oh, yeah, you can really see the layer in, in that one. All right, let's keep going from flower to flower and getting all of that paper um, covered with this layer too, just making sure everything's nice and opaque, which opaque means you cannot see through it. We'll come back around the, the nose and put a little black around the, the, that area. But right now this is looking pretty good. So I'm thinking the next thing we want to do is we want to pick up our black. And I got a new black so I'd have more of a point. But I'm going to come down to the very base of the cone, just the base, the bottom part. And I'm going to start drawing in um, some little lines. Just do it kind of like a little smiley face, and you want to do that for all of the flowers. That kind of gives that shadow effect so it looks more dimensional. Yeah, and you can have it going different directions. That one's going to be going um, different directions. Like the first two might be going in one direction, and and um, those can go, and that one's more up and down, and this one's more at an angle. Right. Okay, so, so pick up your yellow again once you're finished with that. Um, and I'm going to wipe off my yellow a little bit because it had some different colors on it. So I'm going to get it clean again. And then I'm going to come in at the top, and I'm almost just pressing, like, down. I'm, I'm just pressing pretty hard to get anything actually to stick uh, but you can see it it's okay if I just take a couple times you'll you'll get the get the hang of it okay so now we're going to pick up the white so you've got your black line and then you've got your yellow dots and then pick up that white and kind of press again oh yeah that's gorgeous make some little white dots You can turn um, your pastel if it gets dirty like that. Just wipe it off or turn it because you want to keep it pretty pure white. All right, so now, and then the last thing before we say our flowers are finished is we're going to kind of come back with the white. We're going to kind of do just one side of our petal. And that one side will be like a highlight. It won't be like a highlight, it'll actually be a highlight.
really pretty. I wish you, I could see yours. Um, I just, again, I just want to make sure that we give you um, some information about posting these so that we can see your artwork. That's, that's what we really enjoy. It's so rewarding to see what you all have done. Because, you know, we've done this <laughs> from the sketch and practicing horses and all the different things that you do to prepare for a project like this. But you, um, you can't do it any two times and they turn out exactly the same because they always turn out different. And so every one is special. So the fact that yours is different from mine is good. That's good. So we want things to be different. It would be much fun if everybody did everything exactly the same. So we want to have diversity in our pictures. Okay, so if you're not um this far along you can stop and um and if there's extra stuff on there you might want to stop and uh, take a rag and kind of pull all that off over a garbage can i'm actually going to stop right now as well because i've got to do the same thing so if you will just pause it and we'll be back in just a second Okay, so now we're ready to start the grass. And so we're gonna work from light to dark. And we have two different colors of green. You have your lime, lime green, green and then um, you have your, your dark green. green. So we're, we're gonna, gonna first start with the lime green and you're gonna make sure that it's kind of cleaned off. And it's, it's really important. important. You're gonna have to be kind of careful about doing this because now we're putting in all of these colors right beside opposites. Um, so we don't want to, now if you get a little bit of a smudgy it's okay because it's going to give it some of the character but try to stay away as much as possible you're just going to come in and just like you did here you're going to start scumbling in that green and make sure that you leave some of that paper because that's where you can come back in with the darker green over top of it and as you're doing this, and I know um, I keep saying it, but you want to really press down nice and hard because I don't plan on coming back too much after this step. This is going to be kind of my final step. Now, I am going to go more uh, vertical up and down this because that's kind of how the grass is. And so I'm going to kind of work in my grass in an up and down motion, kind of just going back and forth. I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing there. Maybe you can see better now. So up and down, back and forth. It's not going to make a huge difference, but you will be able to see it at the end. Because, and you, you might, might have to clean your white, white a lot, 
but the, the white, white isn't, isn't going to muddy up too much, much because white will blend, blend with, with all colors. So here, see, see the little, see, see how, how we're getting, getting right up in the petal area? area? Just, just by, by using a little bit of white. See how, how it gets, gets, gets dirty pretty quick, quick so, so just, just to keep wiping it off. to put all this hard work in and then skip the step. Except if you're tired, take a break, come back to it. Now you know why uh, artists charge so much money to do big paintings because they take forever. I think this is just 11 by, uh, oh, this might be a 16, 12 by 16, I think. Just think of the time that we spent putting it together. Okay, hey, you see how it's got some of the red in the grass? I don't mind that at all. Actually, I kind of even like it. But you, but you don't, don't want to purposely try to do that. that. It'll, It'll happen on its, its own, and that's okay. So, so now go ahead and pick up the darker green. green. This, this one is uh, my old breeze, breeze one. Um, so um, yours, yours should just be pretty. pretty you'll, you'll, you'll be able to look at it and see it's quite a bit darker than the lime green Crayola. And then, and then just start coming in those areas that you didn't quite color in, or even on top of it, going up and down. It's going to give you some nice layered texture. Flip my paper upside down, 
And since I went vertical with this, I'm going to be orienting my sky more horizontal. So I'm going to turn my paper like this, okay? And we're going to start just by doing a, um, a light, uh, almost like a crayon. You're just going to kind of come through here and you're just going to start coloring in your sky area. Like, like you would with the crayon. And this, you don't have to put a lot of pressure, pressure because we're actually going to go over this several times. It's okay if you get right close to that main. You have to go in the direction, direction to get close to it. Kind of in order. So, 
keep the pressure on it. A little bit more. Because when you did the last layer of white, you put a lot of pressure on it. So the first layer, just kind of the white we did, we just kind of scrubbed, scumbled that in, and now we're putting in another layer of blue. And again, I'm not a professional. I didn't go to art school. Um, kind of self-taught just because I love art. So there might be a better way to do this. And I'm actually I'm pro sure there's a better way to do this. Um, but this is just the way I've done it and the way uh, it worked for me on this project. So you know, we are, we're always learning. Um, and that's the joy. Claude Monet used to talk about how he would paint for hours and he was just so frustrated because he just couldn't get it right. And he would just beat himself up because he never really felt like any painting was truly finished. And we all know how amazing he ended up being. Okay, so um, I think we're going to take a little bit of a break right now and we'll be back in just a minute. So just to make sure we're covering all of our bases, we're going to take um, that blue and we're going to go up and down. So it's covering a little, see how it's covering a little bit differently. So we're filling in all of those spots. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's something that just happened. So we took a little break because we had a crazy windstorm outside. So we went outside so, so we could pull some of our delicate plants in. So I get a little coffee, have a little cough. That's why because the I guess the uh, dust must have gotten in my throat. Okay, so I got some black there, so I'm just going to work it out a little bit. And, uh, take my paper off of my blue a little bit. So sometimes like when you get beautiful art supplies, you're like, oh, I don't want to tear the paper, but you know, it still works and you have to use it how it's going to serve you best. And if tearing the paper helps to make it work, that's what you'll just have to do. So I heard um, a quote one time that um, people are sometimes you don't want to waste your paint, but the only wasted paint, the quote goes, is the paint that's still in the tube. So get it out and use it. Okay, so once we've got all of our up and down, I'm gonna once again pull out that white. I'm gonna do a layer of white and a layer of blue and a layer of white. And our last uh, layer hopefully is our white layer. 
and mine has really been used so I'm gonna have to um, really take that uh, paper off because I had some other colors in there so I'm gonna just clean it off as well paper towels rags whatever you have okay so good okay so this time I'm gonna be going horizontal again This should be our last layer. I'm moving a little bit quicker this time because we've already built up some layers so it's not taking quite as much um, time to go through it and be careful not to get too close to the heart uh, the horse um, because you're gonna you could pull in the black or whatever so after this layer we're gonna take our fingers and we're gonna rub it, rub it all out but we're gonna make sure that we have all the layers in there that we want Careful around the ears. Don't forget, sometimes you're gonna to have to really use your other hand to hold down that paper, or it'll do just like it did to me. It'll it'll scrunch up and uh, make your paper actually bend. So just be careful with that. Here you can see I'm going pretty quick, just kind of back and forth, back and forth, building up those layers. All right. So now just take your finger and start blending it all in. And I'm working horizontal which looks up and down right now to you but when you turn it the correct way it's it's horizontal keep it turned so it's easier for you to do I'm having to put a lot of pressure on that paper right there so um, be careful when you come to the ends too so maybe don't rub back and forth just kind of rub in one direction maybe even off the paper because so, you don't want to rub back and forth at the edge because you'll end up crinkling your paper so you got black there so i need to wipe it off i always think this makes it look really finished oh got some black that's okay, we're gonna blend it out. It's just gonna be part of um, our composition. It's almost like seeing um, brush strokes in a painting. I like to see the brush strokes in paintings and I like to see the process. And so it's kinda maybe the same concept. So if you get some lines in there, don't sweat it. It's really, really okay. And when you're doing this, you might start feeling like your finger is getting hot from the friction, but you don't wanna rub to the point where you're hurting, but if you do get a little bit warm, it's actually okay because that um, heat in your finger is actually causing the oils to blend a little bit better. But now if it's hurting, then you need to stop <laughs> for sure. Okay, don't forget the ends, go on one direction. And sometimes you might need to go back and add a little bit more like I am right here, because it's getting kind of hard to blend, so I'm just kind of adding in. You'll, you'll feel the difference. Okay, and I'm gonna go back and add a little bit of white here. Make it a little bit more blendy. Is blendy a word? I don't think it is. <laughs> Blended would be the appropriate word. But blendy is more fun to say, isn't it? 
So one direction at the end. Okay. Careful around the edge of the horse. And so right now, right up against the horse, I'm going to, um, some white showing here. So I'm gonna add some more blue, kind of really put it in to um, see the space there. So I'm doing it really close around the horse's ears and maybe even around the, the first the front part of his um, head there. Blend that in. Wow, looks so pretty. Okay, so when you're satisfied with that part, I think we're gonna darken a little bit more around um, the, the jawline, and yours may be as dark as you want it. And if it is, don't touch it, okay? But I feel like as dark as you want it, don't touch it okay but I feel like mine is a little bit um, I, I don't like the contrast I don't think there's enough contrast so I'm gonna put in some more um, here on the jaw so I'll put some more again on that jaw uh, jaw bone there so it kind of gives it a little bit more definition just uh, turn your paper however you want to but I'm drawing a nice dark line actually gonna make it a little bit thicker there so I can get it a little bit more defined. Yeah, I think that made a huge difference. So I'm gonna come in and um, put a little bit more uh, blending in around there. I think it just makes his jawline look strong, or her. I like that. Just that little bit touch helped to really define Okay, kind of go back in there and define a little bit more. Okay. Maybe even around um, the little nostril area there. All right. Um, so, and also, um, I think on the demo I came in and put in some more loose hairs on the um, the mane. You can do that if you like. Just just get it to where you want it to look. And so this is actually a point where you just kind of stop, look back, and look at it. And you can piddle with it. You know what do you see um, that's missing or something that's not quite up to what you want to look at like you know this is the time just to finish that part up okay so adding a little bit to my eye so you can just fuss with it as long as you want um just don't fuss too much don't overdo <laughs> okay looking good i'm pretty pretty pleased not upset so why don't we just take a a, a second and um, I'm going to take a rag and I'm going to go over to the garbage can and start brushing it off. Now, um, I'm going to do this in sections. So I'm going to brush the flowers in one direction so that the flowers only um, get their shavings um, in that area. And the horse, I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to come down with the darker pieces go the same direction and then kind of go in the direction maybe turn it upside down now to do the sky all right double check to make sure everything is just the way you want it a couple more white spots in here all right I keep saying I'm done, but I keep going back. <laughs> so the last thing that we're going to do, guys, is um, maybe sign your name if you want. Um, it's actually going to be pretty hard with an oil pastel, but if you can sign your name, uh, you can. Um, maybe not be able to work. Um, I don't even think I'm going to sign this one, actually. I think... Um, I'll just I'll just wait, but I'm going to share a little tip with you all. But we didn't put this in your kit, but this is Krylon that you can buy at um, 
Walmart, Hobby Lobby. Um, I think it's like six, seven dollars a can. Okay. And so what we're going to do, and we usually would take this outside, but since we're having this little storm outside, we're going to just pop open the lid. And I'm just going to show you what it does. <clears throat> Very lightly put, put a, a layer, layer of this on. on. And, and it, it makes, makes that oil pastel look, look like, like real oil, 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 like a real oil, oil painting. painting. It brings, brings it to life. life. <clears throat> now, now this, this will dry, dry. and what's, what's, what what's it's going to allow you to do, well, first, first of all, did you see how the colors just became more vibrant, vibrant super, super, super fast? fast. <clears throat> it's going to stay, stay that way. way. Um, what's, what's really cool, cool about, about doing, doing this is that after you put the varnish on and the varnish dries, you, you can, can go, go back, back over parts just, just as if it was a clean sheet of paper, paper. And, then and then you can, can spray, spray it in. in. So, so if, if there was a part, part that you really, really, really didn't, didn't like, like, you could just, just basically, once it's dry, dry, you could just start, start it again. again. So, so this, this is just something, something that you might want to add. This, this is not uh, something that you have to have. I know you're doing soft pastels. This is an absolute must. But with old pastels, it's not really going to come off, but it just kind of adds that vibrancy like, like oil, oil paint, paint wood to your piece. piece. So, so we, we are, are finished. finished and um, so excited to have this piece done. Don't forget to smile and show us your picture on Moore's Art Camp or at uh, Don D. Moore Art uh, at, on Instagram. And really, really happy. I love this picture and can't do Kentucky without having some horses. So, Hope you all have enjoyed. Thanks. Bye.